This is the new dual motor 35 mile per hour Emu Roadrunner from Voro Motors. It looks like an e-bike, but it's actually a seated scooter because it's got foot pegs instead of pedals. This thing is strangely fun to ride. In fact, it's hard to find in the ESG office because it seems like somebody's always got it. In this review, we'll show you what makes the Roadrunner our favorite seated scooter and also a contender for our list of 10 best scooters for 2022. Stick around because we'll also give you a sneak peek at an insanely fast modified version of the Roadrunner that nobody but ESG has tested yet. At $16.95, the Roadrunner costs about the same as your typical dual motor scooter, but its tested performance turns out to be exceptional for its price. The Roadrunner covered exactly 33 miles on our range test course in top performance mode, which is really good considering my average speed during the range test was within one mile per hour of the average test speed for the Wolf King GT, one of the world's fastest electric scooters. And here's something cool, if you need even more range, you can double it by picking up an extra battery from Voro. It weighs 15 pounds, which is about the same as three college textbooks, so it doesn't feel awkward to carry in a backpack. The Roadrunner has an ESG certified top speed of 35.5 miles per hour. That's almost five miles per hour faster than the previous version and very close to the top speeds of some standout scooters like the Mantis Pro and the Inokim Oxo. And it's more than twice the top speed of another popular seated scooter, the Fido Q1S. And if 35 miles per hour isn't fast enough for you, there's always this. So today, Melvin from Boro Motors has brought us the only Roadrunner scooter in the world equipped with Rion Tronic motor controllers. I've only got a little bit of time with it, so of course, I'm gonna take it for a top speed run. This is the most nervous I've ever been about a top speed run. So we didn't end up finding out the modified Roadrunner's top speed today, but we did hit 57 miles per hour, putting it right there with the fastest scooters we've ever tested. Drop us a comment and let us know if you'd like us to give the modified Roadrunner its own video. The production model Roadrunner is fast, but in an extremely smooth way. The 350 watt front motor and 500 watt rear motor are tuned for top speed, not drama. The power delivery is so smooth, it's as if gravity itself is pulling you forward. The thumb throttle feels great and is so intuitive to use that literally anybody who can ride a bike is gonna feel right at home on the Roadrunner. Now, the smoothness of the throttle means it takes the Roadrunner 3.9 seconds to accelerate from zero to 15 miles an hour, which isn't blindingly quick, but that's still 41% quicker than a sharing scooter. When it came to typical 4 to 6% city hills, sustaining 20 to 25 miles per hour was no problem, so I was able to flow with traffic for the entire range test. It also handled our 10% grade hill climb test with ease, accelerating all the way up the hill, instead of slowing down like some scooters do, which can be a sinking feeling. We were pleasantly surprised to find that the new Roadrunner stops from 15 miles per hour in just 10.4 feet. That's a full foot shorter than the prototype did, thanks to the production model's new semi-hydraulic brakes. Any stopping distance in the 10-foot range is world-class. The Roadrunner doesn't have regenerative brakes, so the brakes are very predictable. Squeeze twice as hard, stop twice as fast. On the other hand, it means that it does take more hand strength to stop than scooters that have regen. So throttle-wise, the Roadrunner is fast and smooth. But right out of the box, the ride quality was a little bumpy despite its large 14 and a half inch diameter air-filled tires and adjustable front suspension. We're gonna show you a couple adjustments that made it a lot better though. Unlike the prototype we tested, the front suspension on the production unit really works. The lever at the top of the forks that's labeled ABS Plus doesn't have anything to do with anti-lock brakes, but what it does do is let you control the stiffness of your front suspension. Find a setting that gives you maximum range of motion without bottoming out or bouncing back too hard. For me, at 165 pounds, it's about the four o'clock mark. There's no suspension at the back and the memory foam seat is pretty firm. So it's kind of like riding a BMX bike with 45 pounds of pressure in the tire. For my rider weight, reducing the pressure from 45 pounds to 35 pounds made the ride feel 40% smoother. And when we redid the range test at the lower tire pressure, it only cost 1.9 miles of range, totally worth it. 
The Roadrunner's amazing corner carving ability is another thing that makes it one of our favorite rides. During the range test, I found myself carving corners even when there weren't any corners to carve. I love the integrated turn signals and the fact that the switches have built-in indicator lights, but I also found myself using my legs as turn signals almost everywhere I went. The build quality of the Roadrunner is really solid, and we actually had something to do with that. Last spring, Voro Motors sent us a prototype Roadrunner and asked us if we'd make a video with our suggestions on how to make the production version even better. And we definitely see some of the things we asked for. The new memory foam seat is a big improvement from the prototype, though thicker would be even better. We asked for more suspension travel and stiffer springs at the front, and Voro absolutely nailed it. The front fork is so much better. It'll work really well for riders from about 135 pounds to 290 pounds, though the scooter itself is rated to carry riders up to 330 pounds. Voro also gave the production Roadrunner more handlebar height adjustment, so it can be set anywhere from an upright seating position to full-on cafe racer stance in less than a minute using a 5mm Allen wrench. The fenders on the new Roadrunner are much better than the prototype, but not perfect. The rear is great, but up front, you're still going to want to add a little more fender for rain riding if you want to stay dry through the big puddles. To demonstrate this, I just cut up an old inner tube and stuck it on, but check out the link in the description for some material you can use to make a better looking one. Voro's website says the Roadrunner is designed for riding in light rain, but definitely be careful in the wet. The Roadrunner doesn't currently have an IP rating, and as we always like to point out, scooter companies generally don't cover water damage under warranty. Here's a trick you can do to check out fender protection even if you don't have access to a scooter. Find a photo online and then take a ruler and line it up with the edge of the tire and the end of the fender. You can see at the back, the fender's gonna work great. But up front, this one's gonna need a little help. Altogether, this is a really solid platform right out of the box, but we're also looking forward to seeing the crazy mods people come up with. The Roadrunner gets really narrow when you fold the handlebars, and you can even take the foot pegs off, but it's still not gonna pass the trunk test in most cars. That said, it does have some superpowers when it comes to parking. The scooter has nearly infinite locking points due to the tubular frame, and the fact that you can bring the battery with you means that unlike most scooters, I'd actually be okay with locking it outside for an hour or two. The battery is dead bolted to the scooter and it comes in and out really easily. And that brings the scooter's weight down to about 48 and a half pounds, which makes it easier to load whether you're carrying it upstairs or loading it in the back of your SUV or wagon. Pros include high top speed, easy to ride, swappable battery, and whether you have one battery or two, great range. Cons include portability, the seat could be softer, needs a little more front fender, and no IP rating. The Roadrunner is super fun and has a rare combination of being very fast, yet very easy to ride, regardless of skill level. It's actually faster than a car for cross-town commuting or running errands, but if you're like us, half the time you'll find yourself riding it for no reason at all. Whatever you use it for, the Roadrunner is great bang for the buck and kind of addictive to ride. To see what we thought of the prototype Roadrunner, check out this video. Or for a look at another seated scooter, check out the review for the Fido Q1S.